All right, look at this cover right out now from New York Magazine titled, When Did Everyone Become a Socialist? Now, we all know socialism doesn't work. Now, give me a minute to explain. You know, the promise is, oh, it'll take away all your fears. Everything's going to be free. It really means government takeover of entire industries. Here's one example. Healthcare, the takeover of the healthcare industry under socialism. Kamala Harris, others, Gillibrand, you will not be allowed to own your own private health care plan. They've said so. By the way, how much you want to bet Democrats exempt themselves and they get to keep their plans? And it's not an exaggeration. The plan is being pushed by Bernie Sanders. Kamala Harris literally eliminates all private health insurance. See, with socialism, everyone is promised. All your worries, anxieties in life are taken away and everything is free which they never keep that promise. Just think of keep your doctor, keep your plan and pay less. But you do give up one, two big things, freedom and liberty in the name of false security. One of the Democrats pushing this is Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. And one of my next guests is calling out the Congresswoman in her Green New Deal, Patrick Moore. He's the former president of Greenpeace Canada, wrote this on Twitter this weekend. Ice. Pompous little twit, you don't have a plan to grow food for 8 billion people without fossil fuels or get food into cities. What, horses? If fossil fuels were banned, every tree in the world would be cut down for fuel and cooking and eating. You would bring about mass death. Patrick Moore joins us now to explain. Uh, and he's joining us with chief meteorologist for weatherbell.com, uh, and that is Joe Bastardi. All right. You know, they're kind of going after your credentials as Green's piece which I think has had a pretty stellar reputation over the years, in spite of my maybe personal disagreements. Um, I'm an all-of-the-above guy and believe we should be good stewards of God's gifts. Okay, so that would mean all the above. Why did you say that on Twitter? Well, Sean, she's talking about climate change, of course, and saying that we have to eliminate fossil fuels, all fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, in 10 years. This would be basically a suicide pact. Over 80% of the U.S. and the world's energy comes from fossil fuels. And the only reason for banning them is the so-called climate apocalypse or climate catastrophe. I see AOC recruiting young teachers and whole classes of young children against the apocalypse, they're saying. They're telling these children that there's going to be an apocalypse in 10 years if they don't save the climate. I think this is child abuse myself. The whole climate change movement has now reverted to using kids as a front for not only climate change and ending the use of fossil fuels, but the whole ball of wax about socialism. You know, I think it, that's really what they're trying to sell. Patrick, it's interesting you say that. There was a really cute girl on, on 60 Minutes last night that's suing the federal government. Apparently, this lawsuit's been going on for four years. And as I listen, you know, clearly she, she believes everything. And, and I agree in the sense that it's very apocalyptic. Joe Bastardi, one thing I love about you is you can tell me what was the big storm in 1903 and where it happened and why it happened and what the conditions were that caused it to happen and compare it to today. And you've been saying that almost the same thing as Patrick Moore. Well, yeah, I'll say the same thing. 1903, by the way, Atlantic City got hit by a hurricane from the southeast yeah, in September. Known. So I'm glad you brought up O3. Show off. Yeah. All right, well, go ahead. You know, when I saw, when I saw the, the new Green Deal, Sean, I thought it was a Saturday Night Live skit. You know, drunk uncle spouting off. I go, we're going to build railroads across the ocean. Let's build one to the moon. We can put a restaurant up there. Great food, but no atmosphere. It'd be a vegan restaurant, though. The whole thing is meant to get you to try to fight against an extreme position while there's incremental creeping of this. And uh, Patrick just, dis Dr. Moore just dis uh, described it. What they're doing to kids, they're indoctrinating kids. Where would those kids be if we did not have the fossil fuel error? The true hockey sticks of the fossil fuel error are life expectancy, the amount of people on the planet, and personal GDP. They're all skyrocketing. It's almost yeah. like these people are ungrateful for what got them here. You know, you think about it, eliminate cows, cars as we know them. Uh, airplanes, Patrick, uh, you know, what, uh, how are we going to get to Europe? We're going to take a sailboat? Are we going to take uh, a high-speed train? No, a train, Are we going to build Sean. it above or train. below the water? You know, so my question, Patrick, to you is, isn't natural gas one of the cleaner-burning 
Cass is out there. Aren't there ways we can improve the environment simultaneously while also using the lifeblood of every economy that feeds everybody, as you rightly point out? Well, Sean, we've actually improved the cleanliness of all the fossil fuels, coal, oil, the vehicle emissions today are less than 90 percent, you know, have been improved by more than 90 percent from what they were decades ago. And, you know, we could use more nuclear energy for producing electricity, that, that's true, and hydroelectric. But funny, they're against both of those two, which are the only two really reliable, cost-effective technologies that could replace fossil fuels. And, you know, we could put re nuclear reactors in the big ships, just like the Russians' whole icebreaker fleet and nuclear navies are powered with nuclear. We could do that. So there are some places where we could reduce fossil fuel. But when it comes to transportation and also agriculture, food and moving people and goods around, if you stop moving the food into the cities, people in the cities will starve. They can't grow their food in Manhattan, enough for all those people in the high rises. <laughs> not, enough, so, not enough tomato pots, I agree, or enough flam uh, I'm gonna give the last word to Joe Bastard. We only have about 15 seconds, Joe. You get to close this out. And if you, if you take a look at the entire history of the planet, the 10 billion years, however far you wanna go back, this would be the first time that man is controlling the climate. I tend to doubt that that is the case. All right, thank you both. It's important everybody hear the other side here, um, even from Greenspeace. All right.